I'd like to tell a story today about the remarkable staying power of the Word of God. Let me read to you a couple of verses from Peter's first epistle, chapter 1, in which he says in verse 23, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because, and here he quotes a section from Isaiah chapter 40, all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. So here we see that the word of God is living, but not only living, it abides forever. By contrast, all flesh is living. It's like grass. It's living, but it doesn't last long. We fade as time goes by, and those of us who are a little bit older know that fading process. And so the preacher has said grass is sown and grown and blown and moan and gone, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So I was accident prone as a boy. My poor mother, I had to be taken to the emergency every year from kindergarten to 10th grade. And on one of those occasions in first grade, I was at a new school and they had a tremendous hill, a very steep hill that ran down just by the, the back door of the school. In those days, I know this is a strange thing for people today, but we had books called spellers, and we actually learned how to spell, which seems to be kind of an antiquated idea these days. Uh, you all have your personal spelling styles, but we actually learned the right way to spell. And uh, a speller was a handy book for that, but it also made for an excellent little sled. Now, of course, we weren't allowed to do this because it ruined the sled, but it was such a great opportunity. I came out of school, we'd had this first snow, and there was the hill whispering to me, give it a try. And so foolishly, I went over and I got on my little sled, my, my speller, and I started down the hill. Well, it went lickety split, and I had no way of controlling it. And as I'm shooting down the hill, suddenly a tree jumped out in front of me. And I put up my hand to brace myself, and I broke my right arm. Now, I didn't want to tell anybody, because I'd done something that wasn't right. I carried my arm around like this for an hour or so, and I just couldn't take the pain anymore. When I got home, I finally had to confess to my mother what had happened. In those days, we just had one vehicle. My father was still at work. He worked down at the city of Niagara Falls. So my mother called a taxi. We got in the taxi, my mother and I, and this taxi driver to head to the hospital. And he had a pretty foul mouth. And several times he cursed and blasphemed the Lord's name. And uh, we were just silent. But I think he became conscious of the fact that uh, we were not impressed with his vocabulary. And so he apologized to my mother. And my mother said, well, now, you don't have to worry too much about us. We're sinners too. But you know, the Lord is in the taxi with us, and he's the one who's offended, and maybe you should talk with him. And the taxi driver sobered right up, and he said, you know something? You sound like my Sunday school teacher when I was a boy at Queenston Street Gospel Hall. He said, listen to this. And he went all the way around the wall. In those days, there was a John 3.16 text at the front and then a series of Bible texts all the way around the walls. And in order, he quoted every one of those verses. Some poor Sunday school teacher trying to keep the attention of this little boy whose eyes were wandering around was actually taking in the word of God. 
this word of God that endures forever. And my mother said to him, I'm really quite shocked at this, to hear how you've been talking and that you knew the word of God in your heart. Do you know something? You'll remember those Bible verses forever. I think you need to spend some time thinking about your eternal destiny because it would be a terrible thing to be able to quote John 3.16 in hell. The poor man. As, as we drove along in the car, I just thought to myself, he really exposed his heart there, didn't he? And what he needed to do was expose it to the Lord. That's what the word of God does. The word of God brings clarity and honesty to us if we listen to it. But it also gives hope. It gives forgiveness. It offers salvation. And that's why he says that the word of God not only lives and abides forever, but this is the word by which the gospel is preached to you. It's not only eternal in its condemnation of sin, but it's eternal in its proclamation of forgiveness for the sinner. I often think of that man and where he is today. But just to remember, when I go out into the day, I have the opportunity of sowing seeds into the minds of people. And those seeds, if they're the word of God, will be there forever.